The Alienware 51M gaming laptop is packing some serious power, including an 8-core desktop CPU, the i9-9900K, and Nvidia RTX 2080 graphics. So let's find out just how well this beast smashes games at 4K, 1440p, and 1080p resolutions. Just quickly before we jump into the benchmark results, I'll cover off the specs in my unit. As mentioned, there's the desktop grade overclockable 9900K CPU, RTX 2080 graphics, definitely no max Q in this thick boy, and 64GB of memory running in dual channel. The 51M is available with different specs though, you can find examples and updated prices linked in the description. I was running Windows 10 with the latest Nvidia drivers available. By default, the 51M offers two levels of overclock profiles with the following settings. As this honestly is an enthusiast grade machine, I've used a combination of the two along with a CPU undervolt that was not being applied by default to boost performance. We're only covering gaming performance here, so if you're new to the channel, you'll want to get subscribed for the thermal testing and full review. We'll start off by going through all 15 games at all setting levels at 3 resolutions, then afterwards see how the Alienware 51M compares to some other gaming laptops. Battlefield 5 was tested in campaign mode rather than multiplayer. At 1080p, even RTX was playing alright, with 60fps averages still reached at ultra settings, while with RTX off, shown by the purple bars, we're getting much higher frame rates compared to other machines. Stepping up to 1440p and we're still getting better results than what most other gaming laptops are able to provide at 1080p, though the RTX results are now about in line with 1080p results from those other machines. At 4K, RTX is pretty much a write-off regardless of setting level. However, 60fps averages were still achieved with it disabled at high settings. Apex Legends was tested with either all settings at maximum or all settings at the lowest possible values, as it doesn't have predefined setting presets. This game seems to cap out at 144fps, and we were able to average this at 1080p in minimum settings. Stepping up to 1440p still saw around 140fps averages at minimum settings, while maxed out was still scoring above 100fps. At 4K, minimum settings were still playable with above 100fps, however for some reason maxed out, the game would chug badly and wasn't really playable. Not exactly sure what happened there, that's the only game this happened in. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with the built-in benchmark, and as a CPU heavy game, seems to benefit well from the 9900K. Granted, at higher settings, the frame rate isn't that high, but the difference is clearer at lower settings. Moving up to 1440p, and the results are still better than most other gaming laptops I've tested at 1080p. Very nice results. At 4K, the frame rates are much lower as you'd expect, however I don't think this game needs a mega high frame rate to enjoy, so you could still easily play it with lower settings. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was also tested with the built-in benchmark, and again, it's no surprise that these are some of the best results I've ever seen from a laptop, with 120fps averages even at highest settings. Even at 1440p, again like the other games, we're seeing performance greater than what most other gaming laptops can reach at 1080p, so very nice. Things drop off quite a bit once we go up to 4K, however 60fps averages were still possible in this test at medium settings, with not much difference at high. CSGO is a game that loves CPU performance, and was tested using the Uletical FPS benchmark. At 1080p, we're seeing crazy performance for a laptop. Well, I guess it's not really a laptop when it will crush your legs. Anyway, 500 FPS averages with all settings at minimum. At 1440p, there was a larger decrease at higher settings. However, still above 300 FPS and not too far below 500 at minimum settings. At 4K, we're still getting better performance than most other laptops at 1080p, again because of that insane CPU performance. Far Cry New Dawn was tested with the built-in benchmark, and as a game that likes CPU performance, we're seeing quite high results for this test, with 100 FPS reached at Ultra. 1440p was still giving performance above most other gaming laptops at 1080p, while 4K was still capable of 60fps averages at Ultra settings, with not too much difference at lower settings. Fortnite was tested with the replay feature, and as a game that runs on pretty much anything, when we give it top end specs we're getting pretty crazy results, with 400fps averages at low settings and still over 200 at epic. At 1440p, 400fps averages were still achieved at low where we're more CPU bound, while epic was still sitting comfortably at 130fps. 4K was still able to reach 60fps averages at epic settings and was actually playable with much higher frame rates possible depending on how far you're willing to lower the settings. 
Overwatch was tested in the practice range, and is another well-optimized game, so it's not too surprising that we're smashing the 300 FPS frame cap at all setting levels except Epic, which is still very high. At 1440p, the frame cap was still being hit at low and medium settings, while Epic settings was still extremely high. 4K still played perfectly smoothly at Epic settings with above 90 FPS averages, though it was possible to boost this quite substantially at lower settings. Metro Exodus was tested using the built-in benchmark. Most parts of the game perform a fair bit better than this, so don't take these results as a good indication of what to expect throughout the entire game. It's more of a worst case, but does let you perform the same test to compare against. Like most other games, even in this resource-intensive test, the 1440p results are ahead of what many other gaming laptops reach at 1080p. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the built-in benchmark, and with the 1080p resolution, ultra settings were able to reach above 200 FPS no problem, with over 350 at low settings. The 1440p results were excellent too, still able to reach 150 FPS at ultra, with high 200s possible at low settings. At 4K, while the results are lower, it should still be usable without issue, even low settings were reaching 144 FPS. PUBG was tested using the replay feature, and the results were great for this test. At 1080p, the ultra settings were higher than most other machines at low settings. At 1440p, we see minimal change at the lower levels, as we're more CPU bound. However, ultra settings were still able to hang on to an above 100 average. At 4K, high settings was needed for 60fps, though very low still gave excellent performance, with results higher than some well specced gaming laptops at 1080p. Watch Dogs 2 loves CPU power, so no surprise that we're seeing excellent results at 1080p, with 90fps averages reached at ultra settings and 100 plus at high and lower. At 1440p, high settings was now only just below 100fps, while ultra was still running extremely well without any issues. Honestly, even 4K ran alright for me. I find a stable 30fps in this game fine, so 32 for the 1% low is at least playable, though you can still hit 60fps averages at high settings. Ghost Recon is another resource intensive game, and was tested using the built-in benchmark. I usually say that you need a thick and powerful laptop to hit 60fps in this test at ultra. Well, even our 1% low is above that with the 51M. At 1440p, it's still capable of reaching a 60fps average, really impressive stuff, while high settings was able to get us 100fps. Things take a hit at 4K as expected, however 60fps in this test was still achieved at high settings. The Witcher 3 was tested with Hairworks disabled, and while it doesn't need a crazy high frame rate, we're still getting one here, with over 150fps at ultra settings at 1080p. At 1440p, ultra settings were still reaching more than 100fps, so it was playing perfectly fine while looking excellent. At 4K, the frame rates dropped back quite a bit, however even ultra settings still maintained a stable 60fps in this game. Strange Brigade is my only Vulcan title, and was tested using the built-in benchmark. At 1080p, the results are pretty crazy, approaching 200fps at ultra settings. At 1440p, the average frame rates are still extremely high and it's running very well. Then at 4K, still capable of hitting 100fps at medium settings. Let's also take a look at how this config of the Alienware 51M compares to other laptops to see how it stacks up. Use these results as a rough guide only, as they were tested at different times with different drivers. In Battlefield 5, I've got the Alienware 51M highlighted in red, and as expected, it's smashing the competition due to the desktop grade hardware. Both the 1% low and average frame rate are significantly ahead of even the closest competition. This thing is literally on another level. Here are the results from Far Cry 5 with ultra settings in the built in benchmark. Again, the 51M is way out ahead. Even the 92 1% low is ahead of the average frame rate most of these machines are able to provide, with the average at least 30 FPS higher than the closest neighbor. These are the results from Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the built in benchmark at highest settings. And once more, there's a significant gap between the 51M and the other machines due to the crazy specs inside. So as we've seen, the Alienware 51M is offering serious levels of performance, which is to be expected. It's a thick machine with a desktop overclockable 8-core CPU and full-on RTX 2080 graphics capable of running up to 190 watts. 1080p and 1440p gaming was no problem at all, while many titles at 4K ran alright depending on setting level. Unfortunately, I don't have data for higher resolutions with the other machines. I only tested the 51M at 1440p and 4K because with these specs, the extra time spent is well justified as it can actually run them. 
I believe you can only buy the 51M with a 144Hz 1080p panel at the moment, which is unfortunate. So 1440p and 4K testing was done with an external monitor, while 1080p tests were done with G-Sync. There are definitely some compromises to be made with a machine like this, mainly in terms of size, battery life, portability and price. It's more of a desktop replacement that can still be moved than a gaming laptop. As for thermals, well I've still got to test that, so keep an eye out for my detailed thermal testing video which will be coming soon. If you're new to the channel, you'll definitely want to get subscribed for that, as well as for the full review of the Alienware 51M gaming laptop slash desktop replacement.